right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to the morning show. Spencer, JC, Steve, Alfonso with you this morning. Big day. We've got the solar eclipse. Who's excited for that? I, it, maybe this is like a, a sign, like I, whoever was saying that in the chat. Uh, was that Yosul or, uh, or, or Stock Market Mike? Eclipse? Crypto? Is that a thing? Is there a relationship there? I don't I mean, it seems like there might be because crypto is doing... Doing its thing again today. So, new guest on the show. Another new guest today. We are ripping it on this show recently. Bill Baruch from Blue Line Futures. He'll be on at about nine o'clock or so. We'll have Mr. Ian Cully on after that. And uh, that's the drill. Good morning, chat. Hope you all had a great weekend. Hope you all are pumped to start the week. I know I am. Let's bring on Steve. Let's bring on JC and get the show on the road. Hit the like, please. Hey now, what's up, ladies and gents? Hey guys, yo! Did a little channel check in at Dick's yesterday. Great store, dude! I spent five hundred bucks at Dick's. I was just gonna ask that. Like a that's hard to do. Five hundred bucks. Tell man. me this wasn't for your kids, like so baseball, the t-ball team. Yeah, but it shouldn't be five hundred bucks. That shouldn't I'm have saying. been five hundred bucks. I bought so I bought like a soccer goal. I bought like two footballs. I bought. You know, my daughter, I got like one of those, you know, book bags for the, the glove and stuff that you put the bat like on the side. We didn't have that when I was a kid. We actually had to carry it. Remember? You didn't have a, a bag for like a bat bag? Yeah, but you know, it was like those long, gross looking ones like back in the day. Yeah, everyone it's had those. Like, this is like way more convenient. Oh. Did she go with you or just the boys? No, she went to some princess shit down in, uh, down in King of Prussia. <laughs> I was gonna go, and then uh, I backed out of that. Ended up taking the boys to Dicks instead. Um, so yeah. yeah, no, it was just it was just me. I had to give my daughter a glove. You know, she already has the bat. We got bases. I got bases, so we can have we can create a baseball field anytime we want now. What did you get for yourself? Mm, sunflower seeds. <laughs> two two different flavors. I got the original, and then I got the Old Bay. Oh, nice. Is that the move? Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's really all I got for myself. So the fact that I spent that much money and didn't even buy anything for me, like, I'm trying to think of like what was so expensive. I guess the gloves weren't cheap, right? Were there people there? Like it was packed? Well, it, it seems as though like Little League is starting across the board because there was a lot of people there looking for Little League stuff. Like, right. so it seems like I was not the only one. So yeah, they, they were crushing it. Good for them. All right. Cool. You know, that's what I got. Uh, what do you say? Uh, what do you say we get into the markets? Huh? After a little challenge, sure. checking the dicks, no big deal. Steve, are you are you bearish trains just for today? You're bearish the transports for today. Uh, are you talking about the travel issues? No, Wait. no, I'm referring to trains and trains and Purdue and Boilermakers. No, all right, never mind. Okay, yeah, that one went away over his head. Moving on to state oh, of the yeah, market. Moving, moving there, right along. There, there is a transportation issue going on in the NCAA. That's not the one I was thinking of. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. Dow Futures this morning doing absolutely nothing. Uh, Dow Futures are up 10 basis points, 38 points this morning. S&P Futures up six handles. Big nothing burger this morning. Uh, NASDAQ 100 futures leading the way up a grand total of 14 basis points. 30-year bond futures, my friends, getting the shit kicked out of them once again. Yes, that is, in fact, a technical term, getting the shit kicked out of them as that slow crash continues in the bond market, down almost a full percent, back down to 116 on 30-year futures. You've got gold uh, flat on the day, 2350 Silver up almost a full percent, 27.75 on silver futures. Uh, copper futures up about the same, four and a quarter, up 75 basis points. Crude oil down 60 bips, all the way down to $86.35. Uh, you got the dollar uh, slightly higher in early trading, not much going on there. Volatility index holding above 16. 
Uh, U.S. 10-year yield, um, you know, ripping higher, uh, of course. And then in the old funny money, Bitcoin up 4% this morning, almost 3,000 points, uh, 72,200 on the BTC. Ethereum, 36.35, up 5%, up 180 points today. Uh, Straz, a big, big move. And um, just to finish up there on the crypto, Solana, uh, up 1%, 181 on the day. Total crypto market cap, $2.60 trillion. Um, and uh, just just want to mention quickly in the uh, in the meme coin complex, you've got the Geo Biden up 17.5% this morning. Uh, Dog with hat up 10% this morning. Mog up 10%. Flogie up 5%. Uh, Mew up 4%, Pepe up 4%, Book of Meme up 4%, the Doge up 2 Bonk up 3 Shiba up 2 even the blue chip meme coins are moving this morning. Um, do you think that the coins are mooning because of the solar eclipse? Do you think that? Or is it a lunar eclipse? Is it a no, I, I think they were stuck sideways for the last few days. Uh, no action at all. Uh, a- our, our, our local uh, eclipse uh correspondent here uh spencer israel is it officially a lunar eclipse because no. the, the moon is blocking it or is it a solar eclipse or are they all solar eclipse mm. and this one in particular is just a type of solar eclipse which is the lunar eclipse anybody have no, no, an this is a total solar eclipse total solar eclipse but it includes the moon so is uh, it not lunar no that's that's a different alignment entirely it's a different alignment shows this you how a- much i know yeah. It shows you how much I know. Um, you're going to be able to see some of the other planets, is my understanding. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Maybe like a Jupiter or something like that, maybe. When uh, was the last? Was it 2017? I think it's 17 when we, the last time we had a, a total solar eclipse. So um, what do you do? You just go stare at the sun? No. You, you Well, you don't stare directly at it. I mean, you could. It would probably bl- it might blind you, but you could. No, it's not going to blind you, but it could cause permanent damage to your retina or whatever yeah, like you don't, yeah. Yeah. don't stare directly at it but it's like some crazy like ultraviolet lights that get exposed when the moon's blocking it or something like that yeah i couldn't um, be less interested in this well it's like think of it like uh think of it like a like a bearish engulfing pattern on the sun <laughs> yeah it makes sense that's good now you like it now yeah. you like now he look at that smile now he's like oh okay i'm in i'm in let's go I, I, but okay, i still Steve, don't I, Steve, do people I will sit tell around you when to do like this. I don't like. What no, do you, you got to put on like fancy glasses. Where do you no, get fancy glasses? You don't have to. You, 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 you can just go outside and not stare directly at I it. I definitely um, trust the glasses uh, at the dollar store. For sure, Steve, they're definitely Steve, ready. Work. Yeah, Steve, at at a like a little bit before three o'clock. Okay, like it, or and really anywhere between one forty and four oh nine. But the peak is at for you is at two fifty six. It says so around two fifty. Outside, take a look. See, look around. Don't look directly don't at look. it. It'll be- Unless you have the proper eyewear, you can't look. Spencer's don't. telling me to go blind myself. Don't look directly. You, you can look at the sky. Uh, yeah, I'll get my telescope out as soon as we're done with the show, guys. Oh man. Uh, all right. Can we um let's talk a little bit about the weekend here? Uh, how do we not start uh with the BTC moon in this morning. Can we throw up a uh, slide two there, Spencer, please? Look at that. What are we thinking here? So that that little shaded area is, you know, kind of like a range. Uh that that goes back to the former all time highs from a few years back. So, you know, really, really flirting with a breakout. You think this is it or you think the struggles the struggle city uh continues no, these levels? No, I think this looks really this looks promising. So for Bitcoin, I'm just looking at a little like hour chart here. You zoom out, you got the that peak from March 14th, I don't know, 73.7, right? And the way we're kind of gunning at that level now with momentum, something, you know, these things really started moving like 1, 2 a.m. as soon as the day turned. And it's across the board. And we've had a lot of sideways, a lot of consolidation already at this level. I mean, how many times are you going to test it before you break through, right? You could say we've been banging at this 70 level a couple times uh, just over the past month and a half now. Do you think... um... You think that the BTC breaks out before the others? Uh, you got Ethereum nowhere near it. You got the Solana uh, and Binance probably, right? You could probably put all those in the same category. You think uh, BTC takes it out first? 
I mean, I think, see, it's already above the prior cycle highs, like it's going for it because this is just a little coil at the breakout level. So I think this probably, this could be done by the time we're over with the show. Binance is right. Binance is right behind it, dude. Yeah, I don't like Binance. You don't like Binance? Uh, I don't love it, no. Remember when you, remember when you guys laughed at me? Uh, when Binance was at 200, do you remember laughing at me? Spencer and Straza, do you remember both laughing at me? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody remembers. Yeah. I, I didn't say it wouldn't work. I don't want to buy Binance. That was a classic, not a top. Classic. Down at support. You guys laughed at me. I mean. Laughed. Not even like, oh, JC, yeah. nice idea, but I'm not going to do it. No, no, no. Oh, did you do it? Laughed. Did you do it? I did not buy it. I did not buy Binance. Oh, that's not true. I, I shouldn't say that. I, I, I bought Binance. I didn't buy a meaningful amount. So for all intents and purposes, I didn't. But yes, I did buy some. But nothing that matters, unfortunately. Uh, I think Bitcoin looks really good here. Bitcoin looks um, good. Yeah. All right. And then um, why don't we move on to real asset classes, right? Because I think people fail to re remember that, that Bitcoin is still in the minor leagues of asset classes, right? trillion yep. dollars and zero might as well be the same thing right so yep. real assets so let's let's look at uh, gold gold is 15 times the value of uh bitcoin making new all-time highs uh and i gotta tell you you know a lot of people are like oh because of the money printing oh the money printing jc and the uh the, the powell and the fed and the trump and all these things mm. and that that might very well be true here in the uh, good old U.S. of A., but why don't you move on to what I think. This this is a Hall of Fame chart right here. Go to the, Come on. Come on. This is a hell of a chart. I don't, get, I don't do this a lot where I just, like, you know, give myself kudos. This is a hell of a chart. Come on, chat. Can you guys chime in? Are you going to tell me this isn't a Hall of Fame chart right here? Come on. You, you did this or one of the boys did this for you? Oh, oh, I did it. Really? You're saying my kids did it? Me and the boys? Good boys. No, the guys. The guys are what? The, the analyst team. Dude, my kids, they open up my laptop and they just start <laughs> whacking away. They see daddy doing it. They're like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. I'm Come not on. talking about your boys. I'm talking about our boys. No, this is me, baby. This All is right. the OG in the house. Come on, Spencer. Spencer, you see a lot of good charts. Tell me this isn't this isn't killer right here. Finally got it done in Swissy. Finally got it done in Swissy. That's right. It's a good call. It's a good point. Uh, been getting it done in yen, which is yep. hilarious. Uh, Euro, British pounds, Aussie, CAD, the Chinese Yuan, rupee, South African rand. Nasdaq Poppy says, why is it crypto talk on money? It's crypto talk all the time, every day, because it is real money. Yeah, no one's saying it's not real money. It just doesn't matter to anybody who matters, right? It's just so small that like, if you have any money at all as an investor, professional investors, you can't touch it or you can touch a little bit. But nothing meaningful. This is a real asset. This is, this also has been a real asset. It's not like anything new. Like this has been around for for a minute, right? You're talking about around a minute. The way that you phrase that's terrible, though. How so? Because like a professional investor with a ton of money can still participate in the crypto market like any other market, and it could be very meaningful to them. You're talking purely about institutions, to be clear. Right. So real investors, like re investors that actually move markets. Yeah, anybody who matters, I guess. Right, right. That's just investors who matter. Right. Retail, you don't matter, Straza. I mean, which is fine. I don't matter either. For the record, I don't take offense to it. If somebody else wants to take offense that they're a smaller retail investor, not. I mean, you know, I'm not going to tiptoe around you because you're so fragile. You know what I mean? Like you don't matter. You are an irrelevant. You know, nothing. Star. You are less than nothing. Right, and that's harsh, okay. Harsh word. By the way, I'd rather be. I, I'm. Totally cool being nothing, and I could just swim in any pond I want. I could buy my Geo Bowden. I don't need to like worry about my mandates or worry about like you know buying too much Bowden and and moving markets. I don't have to worry about any of that. I could just you know pick and choose whatever I want. It's a huge advantage being an irrelevant nothing. By the way, fun fact. Anyway, back to real assets. Fifteen trillion dollar assets. Thoughts, concerns. What's the gold uh, market cap of gold? 15, almost 16. What's silver? Three? Uh, one and a half. Platinum's like nothing, dude. Platinum's like 250 billion or something like that. 
JC, why don't you tell people where they could uh, see this chart besides the show? Well, there's this website, allstarcharts.com. I highly encourage you guys to check it out. It is but, a dope site. But like I saw is- I saw this chart over the weekend in uh, a free report you guys just put out. Oh, I see what you did there, Spencer Israel. Yeah. yeah. So, listen, I, I a lot of people are asking me, you know, JC, where do you think gold's going to go? Where do you think silver's going to go? People are interested in real assets. Um. So I just, you know, I, I couldn't help myself. I put it out there, you know, and, and really what I wanted to kind of reiterate, I hope I did a good job of that, um, is that I, I don't think this is like a dollar thing. I don't think this is an America thing. I don't think this is a Powell thing and ease, you know, I think that this is just currencies all over the world are losing their value and currencies around the world have all been breaking down relative to real money. And the dollar was the last one uh, hanging on for dear life. And now the dollar broke down, right? So now it's all the currencies around the world are, we're literally watching the devaluation of your currencies every single day. Uh, And the dollar is included on this list. But this is a global thing. It's been happening for a while. Just happening in America now, you know? Copper, looking pretty good. Maybe the dollar, do you think the dollar has nothing to do with commodity strength, though? At all? Commodities and the dollar have been moving together. I know. Yeah. I think it's not, I think it's less of a dollar thing and more of a commodities thing. Yeah. I give you, you know, price all those commodities and other Forex. It's fine. You know? The rally in commodities is really broadening out. Like, look at the, look at the copper chart. Copper hasn't seen these levels since summer of 2022. Dude, overlay, overlay gold and copper. They don't move in opposite directions for very long. Oh, I'm familiar with the chart. Love it. You know what I'm saying? Another, another big base coming coming to uh, theaters near you soon. Um, how about slide five there? That was, that was this morning's chart. It's a great. It's a great index. This is the New York Stock Exchange oil index. Can you throw that one up there, Spencer, please. Please, sir. Thank you. May I have another? There it is. All-time highs. You know why I like this index so much? Again, New York Stock Exchange killing it. Big shout-out. Big shout-out to the New York Stock Exchange. Can we give a big shout-out to the New York Stock Exchange? Come on. A lot of international exposure. You got uh, PetroChina, Petrobras. You got the Eco Petrol or whatever, the Colombian one. You got Total in France. You got uh, British, you got Royal Dutch Shell. I think BP's in there, too. So I mean, you got a is, lot of international exposure. That's yeah. cool, right? So this is just like a global, multinational or large integrated players index. It's all the this big. This is the New York. This the is the New York Stock Exchange oil. So yeah. name whether, any of those big. companies, whether they're in America or not, a lot of them trade in the New York Stock Exchange. Obviously, they're included. Yeah. So all the ADRs are in this. This is how it's different. That's right. Um, I like interesting, that. Interesting, right? You know, I wonder if there's an ETF that tracks this because. I doubt it, dude. I doubt it. These ETF providers got their heads up their asses, man. But you'd rather be in this than XLE. Uh, it looks way better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no doubt. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, the, the oil index and crude oil, obviously, uh, move together. So what is this strength in these oil stocks telling us? about uh, the upcoming prospects for uh, crude oil futures. Uh, funky candle already out here this morning, crude oil. Funky candle this morning. It's 8.50 a.m., bro. What are you talking about? Yeah, nice little wick here. Yeah, I hope it gets crushed. Why? Why do I hope oil gets crushed? Yeah. So I can back up the truck, baby. Beep, 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 beep. You know, right? I... Somebody's pretty bullish on oil. Talking about this monster trade. I'm bullish on oil. Mm-hmm. I like lines that go up. Yeah. Don't we all? Man, can we can we talk about bonds, man? What is going on over there? How is this not a bond crash, dude? It's not a bond crash. Look at the bond volatility. You need volatility for a crash. Do you? Crash. Is that like a rule? Yeah. Like the definition. I don't think there's like a real definition for what constitutes a crash per no, se. It is, it is trust me. Jeez, Louise, this thing sucks. No, you're wrong. 
Uh, I'm but, wrong. All right. 30 so, year bond futures, lowest level since Thanksgiving, dude. If rates roll over, do all these commodity charts that we're talking about looking so great uh, not look so great anymore? Which ones? All these commodity charts that we're talking about and about how well these assets have been trending. Do they need yeah. rates here or higher? What if rates roll back into these old ranges? If rates roll back into these ranges and bonds stop crashing, um, commodities are probably not doing great in that environment, if I had to guess. Hmm. So the investing world that thinks we need lower rates for asset prices to go up, are they aware of this dynamic? The rest of the world who thinks that interest in, rates need to go down for asset prices to go up? The investing world, right? The narrative is that rates are going to go down, asset prices are going to rise, right? We're going to get all these cuts this year. That was the bullish Is that still narrative. the narrative? Are, th are these people on drugs? They can't still think that. It's slowly shifting, but people are still expecting cuts one day. Think about how many drugs you have to do to think that interest rates have to go down for asset prices to go up. You got to be on, you got to be on some shit, man. It's worked before. I yeah, think so what? It goes down to. What does that have to do now? I'm just, I'm just talking about there's going to be winners and losers, right? Have you noticed that relationships have shifted and changed somewhat over the last couple of years? You notice that, Stressa? Big time. Big time. Big time. And I think that there's opportunity there because it's taking, it's taking people, uh, it's taking investors a long time to wrap their heads around these new relationships. You got people that are out there buying treasury bonds as a safe haven instead of, you know, if you think stocks are going to go down, just short stocks. Like, why on earth? Like, what kind of psychopath is going to go out there and buy long-term treasury bonds as a safe haven when stocks and bonds have been moving together? We'll see. We'll see. You don't want to overthink any intermarket relationships right now. Ever. Yeah, it's true. Ever. Uh, but I think that there's, uh, I think that there's, um, I, th I think you need to think about them. I think I need to, I think you need to be aware. I mean, if you're just ignoring a bond market crash because there's no bond volatility. I think you're missing out on what's happening, my man. I think you're missing out on what's happening. If you think interest rates are going lower, that's only because you haven't taken a look at what interest rates are doing, you see. What's the best trade for Q2? The best trade for Q2? Yeah. Dude, I'm going to the beach for a month, man. That's a good trade. That's the Perlman trade right there. Honestly, that's not a bad answer. Normally, I would be like, thanks for punting on my question. But... I just keep looking around and I don't find, you know, uh, new opportunities that I want to enter right now, especially over shorter time frames. And I got a pool yeah. in my beach house. That's cool, right? Uh, Steve, you said that a week or two ago and then you turned around and started, bought Natty Gas or whatever. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to get creative here. But oh, okay. <laughs> not a trade I normally make. That, that was like, that's a fun one. That's a little YOLO. All right. All right. Yeah. You know, I, I okay, just stopped too. I've been trading natural gas for a long time. I used to think I was a natural gas trader when I was young and foolish. And um, so I've learned a thing or two about natural gas. And what I've learned is that down here is historically a great time to be accumulating natural gas. However, it's messy down here, like always. It takes forever. That's why I like that that MACD, monthly MACD crossover switch, which I never like. That's just not, it's just not for me, but I like it this time. No, I'm into it, too. I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah, Nat Gas, you would think, would start working in this environment, but it's just kind of, don't we call it Notre Dame sometimes for this reason? Dude, it's like on a different planet. It's like yeah. not oil. It's like its own thing, you know? It's its own thing. Um, I'd rather be late to this one, man, you know? I, first of all, see, Dawson knows I have too many Nat Gas scar scars. I'll pass. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you, Dawson. Wait, so um, are you playing? I, am, I, I like, I'm the conservative old man in the room and I like paying more knowing it's on the way up, right? Like I'd rather stay at the nicer hotel knowing I'm going to get the amenities. I'm okay with that instead of being cheap and then, you know, bitching that the sink doesn't work or whatever, right? You know what I mean? Like I'd yeah. rather pay a little bit more knowing I'm going to get better quality. Um, that's how I feel about uh, stocks a lot of times. Like I want to wait for the breakout. I got to see it. I think that's, I think in natural gas, it's a good example of that. I got to see it. it the I don't call it the Widowmaker for nothing. Go. Right. Floor. Uh, it, hey, earned, so, it earned that title. So, JC, are you planning to do the morning show live from the beach? I don't understand. I did it last summer. Huh. Wow. Remember? 
Remember when yeah. you guys were laughing at me about Binance? That was yeah. in the beach. Well, it must be nice. Yeah. You live at the beach. Yeah. I was well, technically he doesn't live at the beach. He lives in Key West. It's more like docks than beaches, but yeah. Whatever. Yeah. There's no sand here. There's not a lot of beaches. There's no beaches there. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Good uh, good 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 attempt though, Spencer. I see you, dog. I was oh. at the this guy was tan. I was at the sandbar this weekend. That was a beautiful beach. The beaches yeah. are out in the water. You gotta you gotta take a boat to them. <clears throat> that's that's lovely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Great. Good time. Uh, all right. Age 58 here. Uh, should we bring our, uh, our guest? I think we should. Early? I think we yeah, should. Yeah, Bill Baruch, Blue Line Futures. Um, you've seen him. He's he's around. He's a great follow on Twitter and or whatever the kids call it these days. He's on the uh, financial news networks quite frequently. And uh, I always like what he has to say about, about the market. So let's bring Bill on and see what's going on. Jay, we've make, been friends for a long time. Make the call. I mean, this is pretty professional, guys. It's a nice, uh, nice show you got going here. Hey, Bill, what's going on, my man? Oh, oh no! Oh no! Bill, we, we we don't got your audio here. Check oh. your on, check if you're on the run, right mic setting or something. Um, but he looks great. Yeah, you look fantastic. He looks. Uh, better than 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 I. That's for sure. Definitely. So sharp. Um, if you, if you can't get it in the next ten seconds, uh, I'll go backstage with Bill and I'm going to do some. Why don't you go backstage uh, with Bill? I got a chart. Why don't you throw up slide six? Well, I want to I want to give Bill like ten seconds to get it going, and then this is the beauty of not doing live, not doing TV like this. There it is. You got me. Around. Oh, there hey, he is. Hey, Bill. Hey. There he is. There we go. Yeah. Thanks What's for having me, man. Yeah, great, great to be on with you. Sorry about the glitch there, but uh, I love the conversation. Listening to you guys uh, before I hopped on, commodities, love commodities, and uh, you know my quarter two trades already starting to happen. I mean, gold, look at that thing go. Is that your is that your favorite commodity right now? Is gold not not energy or or copper? You like gold? I mean, I've been an eternal gold bull. I've been waiting for this this type of move for for what feels like you know. 20 years now. I mean, since 20 or 15 years. Why? How come, how come, why? Why have you been waiting for this for so long? Well, I, I mean, just just from from a from a sentimental standpoint. But I mean, there's been a lot of bear, you know, sort of negative moves down in gold. But where where you get a what I think we're seeing here is you have everything colliding at once. Geopolitics. You got I think with with the BRICS is something that can't be ignored. We have the divergence with Treasury yields and gold breaking out. I think there's a lot here. Where where it's, gold's doing what it wants right now, and uh, some of the some of the previous market forces where yields rising and holding gold back is uh, is you know not here right now. That's so that's that's something I really love to see. I gotta tell you, I I have been not really anything new, but I have been very impressed with how well gold has held up despite the rise in, in real yields. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's been a big, the biggest headwind for gold for, I mean, going back to last year, you know, even, even when, uh, you know, we had some, we had yields kind of stagnant for a bit. It was the real yields that, that were really keeping, uh, you know, gold I mean, re reversing pretty heavily from April uh, highs last year, about a year ago. So it's terrific to see the divergence. Um, it's, I, I think it's something that can continue, but I mean, at, at some point though, you got to ask yourself if, if yields keep going higher, at what point does it start to weigh on, on gold? Um, you know, gold's a non-yielding asset. There's storage costs to it, so uh, it's something you, you gotta you gotta stay uh, stay nimble with. You know, Bill, seems to me like it's less of like, you know, it's not a yielding asset, and you know what's what's it doing relative to rates, and it seems to me like more of just like a commodities oh. thing, and and gold is one of those commodity things, right? Like it seems to me like there's a lot more going on here than like a very gold specific, like they use, like astronauts use it and dentists use it. Like, I feel like that's like, you know, fun and everything, but I feel like there's a much, much bigger story here. Yeah, I, I think commodities, I mean, it's it's their time to shine. Is this a commodity super cycle? You know, I, I'd like to think so. I mean, we, yeah. we had cocoa. Everybody was looking at cocoa in the mix you know, about a month ago and still is. Coffee's breaking out of a nice little wedge pattern. I think there's some good tailwinds there. We got calls in our in our commodity fund. Um, I mean, there's. I mean, you've been talking about energy. I mean, energy is really starting to do some really great things. 
I like to see the U.S. ag markets like uh, like you know, corn, soybeans wake up a little bit. But other than that, we've seen we've seen some really big commodity moves, and including the metals. Uh, when it, when gold usually starts to make the move and silver follows, I'd love to see get silver get above thirty dollars. Copper's waking up. Platinum and palladium are waking up. Aluminum looks really good. So I mean, this this is this is commodities. I mean, I think there's really something going on here. Yeah. Um... You know, you, you mentioned you mentioned some of these other metals like copper and some of these other base metals. You know, that's you know, it, it's not just gold. It's not it's not just copper. Right. You mentioned aluminum. You mentioned some of these ags. But silver is the one that's interesting because silver has just continued to underperform for so long until recently. Now we're seeing the silver gold ratio at the highest levels all year. That's something that we that's something new. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't ignore that. And you know, the nice thing about silver from a leverage standpoint, I, I've gone going back and trading metals for, for 20 years. Um, it, I've always believed that there is no better leverage in the commodity markets than silver options. And I mean, when silver starts to get going, I mean, there, there is some really, you know, using options and, and trying to capture silver above thirty dollars. I, I think is a tremendous trade. It's a great way to be managing your risk. And. And we've seen some some moves in silver recently. Even just last night, you had a little bit of a shakeout early on in, in the overnight, uh, coming out with some some of the news. But you know, technicals really mattered, and 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 the the market forces ultimately silver set new highs. You know, with it, you know, really strong volume last night and around the around the Asian Open. You don't typically see stuff like that, and that that's what really reminds you that this is this is a, a real move. This is a bull market. Bill. You said you've been waiting for like a, this move in gold for, for a long time. But don't you kind of get a little bit concerned when everyone starts to agree with you? Oh, absolutely. Everyone. Doesn't that freak you out? Absolutely. I've always, I mean, one of my sayings has always been, you want to own gold when nobody wants it, and you want to capitalize on the gold that you have when, when everybody's screaming for it. I think everybody's really sort of screaming for it. But but I think one of the things that, that are important, I mean, when the market moves like this, it, it does capture it does capture the the focus of, of many. I um, mean, the technical forces are there, uh, the fundamental forces are there, but I think there's just such an array of reasons for the first time. It's not just you know the the, the peak in rates. You know, when typically when the Fed cuts rates, um, you know you, they they typically bottom out. When the Fed hikes rates, um, that's typically the top. You know, so there's usually there's usually some some diverging market forces that are that are the ac actual narrative. A weakening dollar, but now I, I think you look across the board. There's just a, so many numbers of reasons here, and it's not just the metals, as, as we've spoken. It's it's commodities very broadly. So that's the most interesting thing. Um, I mean, if you've been looking at it, and, I, and, and I've seen some of your guys charts. I mean, JC, you've talked about it for a while. The big consolidation from from 1900 going back to 2011 high. I mean, this has been something building for for a very long time. And, and when you finally get the move, that's that's the bullish move up and, and to have sort of a melt up factor. Um, and that's that's the confirmation that that you want to see from a technical basis, I, I believe. Can we talk about bonds? Absolutely. What the hell's happening there, man? I feel like, you, you know, you, you talk about how everyone's talking about gold and silver and commodities. I don't see anybody talking about the bond market crashing. I, I got people telling me that interest rates are going down. I'm like, have you even looked? Yeah, I mean, we've seen some interesting moves. I mean, it's just sort of a meltdown in bonds. I mean, there, there's supply that came on two weeks ago. Maybe the market's still digesting it. Um, it data's been you know, a bit firmer. I mean, not farm payroll, resilient, jobs overall, resilient, CPI for, for February released in March, stronger PPI as well. And then commodities, you know, th that is underlying inflation, seeing the move in commodities. Um yeah, I mean, bonds Bonds are trying to tell us something. Now, it is a supply-demand market. So, I mean, we know the government's putting on a tremendous amount of, of, of supply right now. My, my question in tying that to gold is, if you look at BRICS, like Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, are they sell, is anybody selling bonds out there? And I, I, I kind of wonder that question, too. And are they using that money? Are they selling bonds and, and, and buying gold? Are they selling bonds and buying their currency? Are they, are they selling the U.S. dollar in some manner? And we know that... We know that China is selling dollars, buying Chinese yuan. Um, I, you know, overall though, you know, it, it's it's good. It's an interesting move. I, I would not get in front of this, and we've actually played played with some structured puts uh, in in uh, on the bond market ahead of non-farm payroll. But you know, I I would have liked to believe that that we're going to see you know Fed cuts this year. I mean, it's more more from a political angle, and and there's pockets within the economy that are slowing. But I would like to believe that we we would be seeing some cuts this year, and um, I, I still think. 
I mean, I, I think June is, is fairly green light still. Um, but the question is, is, is what is the bond market telling us? What does the bond market know that everybody doesn't? And, and, I, and I, I don't have a great answer for that right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that people, I think a lot of investors make the mistake to worry so much about what people are saying. Uh, the fad guy, the the, the I mean, Neil Kalpari guy, whatever JC, his name is. JC, look look no further than this morning. Jamie Dimon is making all the headlines this morning because his his annual shareholder letter is out. And, is, is he um, saying how Bitcoin's going to zero as it keeps making new all time highs? Is he still saying that? I didn't read that part, and I not, I didn't read any of it. But the headlines are all about his comments about interest rates and inflation, which he's been pounding the table on for years. That are so. that are going to be doing what? Out of curiosity. Uh, interest rates could, well, I mean, in his fairness to him, he did say they're preparing for a variety of outcomes, interest rates are anywhere from 2% to 8%, but the 8%, oh, thanks, the 8% is getting all the headlines. The let's, 8% let's, gets, remember, let's remember something. You have to be some kind of psychopath to think that Jamie Dimon is there to help you. Jamie yeah. Dimon is there to help himself, as he should, by the way, as the CEO of JV Morgan. He, he works for shareholders. He doesn't work for you, the consumer or the individual investor. He owes you nothing, right? So when he tells you things, he's telling you things for his own best interest, again, as he should. So why the hell should any of us care what he has to say? Bill, any thoughts on that? I'd be really curious to hear I, your thoughts. I agree with you. I think, you know, I really echo what you're saying. And I'll even one up and say that, uh, you know, he's – he is from cut from a cloth, you know, from being in the, as a banker through the eighties in nineties, really, you know, lifted his career. Then you talk to any bankers that, that prime career eighties and nineties, I mean, they're used to interest rates being excessively high. So really when interest rates start going higher, you always hear about Jamie Dimon saying, you know, what I think it was October, 2019, you know, he's saying that interest rates are going, you know, we're seeing the tenure go to 6%. When he starts chirping, when these guys start chirping, that's usually near the peak in interest rates. And bonds basically bottomed around that time. I mean, we never got above, I think it was above 4%. I mean, we touched maybe maybe 4% in, at that time in, in the 10-year. But every time that, that he starts chirping about, about and I, I like the guy. I mean, you know, listen, he's a great, great leader for J.P. Morgan. I love Jamie Dimon, for the record. Yeah. I, I'm not saying anything bad. Yeah. I think he's doing what he should be doing, looking out for his shareholders, not mom and pop. He has yeah. no, he does, he owes them nothing. He works so the for fact his that, that He's talking this, this morning. I, I mean, heck, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go out and buy bonds today. I'd be an idiot. But, I mean, overall, I mean, you got to be, maybe are we close to the bottom here in the bond, in, in the bond in the note market? Just given some of the comments that, that he said, historically, we've been able to see bottoms and treasuries and tops and yields when he starts talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys are, I think you guys are right. How, how much do you do you trade the curve at all in fixed income or are you are you like specific contract specific? I, I, I do at times. I mean, there's been times where where we're, I'm selling the two year and buying bonds. I, I actually did a little bit of a, of a vice versa trade. I had a PCE where I actually bought the two-year at the stop and loaded in some bond puts. And I got stopped out last Monday and then rode the puts down a little bit ahead of non-farm payroll into the middle of the week. But um, I, I will a little bit. That's not not my trade. I look for opportunities if I have a bigger, broader thesis. And but what we're doing on the, on, on the well side, you know, maybe underweight, duration, things like that, we'll, we'll do a bit. But I'm not, I'm not, I mean, you're asking somebody here in Chicago and I'm not one of the people that I know that are sitting there trading the curve and doing that for a living. That's not, that's not my you know, sort of the game. No, that's, that's, it's, it's good, good perspective, but you are, you know, yeah. can you just talk, let's take a step back for a second have some fun. Um, you know, when, when I'm in New York and I spent a lot of time in New York still do, uh, you know, you're in line at the bathrooms, you know, you're, you're at the bar and everyone's talking about the stock market, stock IPOs, this and that. When you're in Chicago, and you're in a similar sort of establishment. The conversations are about futures, commodities, options, right? It's they're just two different cultures. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, especially down here at the Board of Trade, you know, series isn't what it used to be, but but that that bar historically, I mean, you're you're having conversations a lot of times about agriculture, what's going on in commodities, what's going on in, in the bond market. And, and I mean the people that I network with in, in our team here, 
you know, as a commodity broker and as a, as a commodity trading advisor uh, here, you know, people we network with are, are typically other commodity traders. And that, those are the conversations that we have. Now, we do want run a, a wealth manager, too, that, that focuses on equities and spend time in New York myself. And I so I, I see both worlds of it. And, and in New York, I'm, I'm talking equities with most people. So it is, it is I, I do agree with you. There is that uh, that, you know, Chicago has that hub to it. And, um, and New York has that hub to it. If, if you're, if you're focused in, and around those, uh, you know, the networks that are, that are trading around the board of trade. And I mean, later today, I'm going to the CME group, have a meeting there. I mean, things like that. Well, you of know, course you are. You're, you're tied in with people. Yeah. And then what about series? Um, you know, I, I, you know, when the, when the Chicago guys make fun of the New Yorkers, they tell the joke about how a New Yorker came to series and order and asked for a double. And, <laughs> um, you know, the bartender, you know, suggest that he not do that and um you know after a few of those he has to get taken to the hospital right that's how the oh, yeah. chicago guys yeah. like to bust balls on the new yorkers right i like that if you order if you order a uh, jack and coke at uh, at series you're, you're getting a, a glass full of, of jack daniels on ice you got to sip it down so you can pour the coke in there it's like a, it's like a, and it's like spilling over the side oh yeah a great bar what a yeah. great bar that is it just makes me so happy being there I mean, no, it's starting to get a little more lively. I mean, the, the loop is is starting to get a bit more, you know, around here. And uh, I mean, you know, happy hour. It's not what it was. Not, it's not as many as traders, you know, coming, you know, at, at three o'clock when the markets close as it once was. But I walk past and walk through the train and I mean, and it's, it's it's more crowded than it was a year ago. So it's good to see. Um. Bring, bring it back to the equities market. Are you trading S&P futures, NASDAQ futures and, you know, yeah, you trading those at all also. Yeah, yeah. We so we have a. I have two commodity funds, commodity trading advisors. Um, one's just a metals focused fund, and then one is uh, just is we call it global opportunities. It's forty percent metals, thirty percent stock index futures, fifteen percent energies, down in five, five and five of uh, treasuries, currencies, ags. But um, yeah, I do a lot of stock index futures. We're, we're short right now. Um, just just kind of sort of kind of waiting, you know, kind of muddling through. The, the thesis that we were, you know, maybe a little extensive about coming into April, um, the big spike we had, 5330, using it as a bit of an opportunity, you know, our, our average price around 5300 and trading around a core from last week. So, you know, you, what my my theory is, is really kind of have a core position and, and to kind of put it in perspective for for the viewers out there, you know, unit size for that fund is 250,000. But I'm trading micros. And so I'll build up to, you know, anywhere between five and 10 micro S&Ps and trade around that core position. I'll use some options as well, like you know, a put spread here and there of, of the actual E mini, and and I, I I like to use the theory that I'm you know never put my back against the wall, always have flexibility in the in the way I'm trading. So I mean, even though the market started to levitate a little bit right now, if we start getting out above where that high was on on Thursday before we rolled over, I'm out of the way. I mean, but don't I don't want people thinking I'm bearish the market. This is this is a trade, you know, and what I'm done on the on the wealth side is very similar. I've raised a little bit of cash. Uh, and wealth portfolios, I even have SPY puts on right now, just half a percent of the portfolio into May, 500 strikes, just to give a little bit of a cushion if the market does roll over a little bit. So being, I'm, I'm an active trader, active manager, and, and trying to stay with the market and, and you know, strong opinions held weekly. Oh, I mean, you, that's a good don't line. You have to, don't, don't you have to, Bill? Because it's not like the stock market where a lot of these things trend over time. And commodities is more mean reverting in nature. It's more contract specific. You know, can you can you touch on the differences between the two and how you think about it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I will say, you know, being a commodity trader starting back in 2006, uh, and and then really diving. I mean, I've always managed my own equities and stuff, but but being a professional, you know, registered equity manager beginning of 2019, 2020. You know, it's made so they commodity traders made me a better equity investor, and an equity investor has made me a better commodity trader. I've been able to sort of utilize the both of them the past several years to really up my game. But but you're right. I mean, they're 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 very different. And one of the things that I do like about commodities, and one of the reasons why I did launch the commodity fund was the CME Group has done a terrific job. You know, creating these these micro contracts across the board on all the futures. There's yeah. micro gold, micro silver. Uh, micro indices, micro copper, I think is really one of the best ones. And, you know, overall, uh, micro crude oil, but it, it's allowed you, you know, where years ago, early on in my career, 
you know, looking for these, yeah, mean reversion, or you're looking for, you're looking for maybe some sort of trend sometimes if things are breaking out. But my my duration of trade uh, 10 years ago was a lot shorter and, and it had to be much more precise with, with the hard stop and the contract sizes were bigger. I mean, right. you know, now I, I, I try to treat some of the some of the commodity trading as a bit a bit more of investing because you have the micro contracts and leaning into things and building core positions around things. So I've been able to use doing both sides of the, of, of, of S securities and equities as well as the commodities to complement each other and, and help improve what way I look at things. This is why they launched the micros, right? Just for Absolutely. things like this. This is, exa- this is exactly it. Yeah. I mean, it really opened the door. I, I, I think that, I mean, given how much interest is out there in crypto and a lot, I mean, obviously these meme coins and things like that, that, that people are making tons and crazy money on. I mean, people really got to wake up to some of the opportunities. And I I hope this commodity super cycle really comes through here and wakes people up to what the CME group has has offered in these, in these micro contracts, because it it really, it, it lowers the barrier to entry for people, especially allows people to learn on these smaller contract sizes. I, I think one of the best launches, I mean, people aren't going to really talk about I mean, the, the micro S&P, the micro NASDAQ, but I mean, micro crude oil, micro copper and, and micro gold. I mean, they've really opened the commodity door for people, too. And, and there's there's small agriculture contracts, too. So I, I think it's I, I mean, us. I mean, I, I'm, I'm speaking biasly. I, I run a commodity brokerage as well. But I mean, I, I one of our goals has been able to sort of see see how much you know what crypto has been able to attract in the younger crowd. And, and we want to wake that younger crowd up to to what's out there in commodities right now and in the lower barrier of entry. Bill, the kids these days, they, they don't know anything about uh, commodities. They, they you oh. know, the way I learned it was that there were three asset classes, it was stocks, bonds and commodities. Right. And then a funny thing happened uh, when uh, commodities underperformed for so long. Right. Um, what about how do you feel about the fact that the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100, you know, probably the three most popular indexes um, have have gone out of their way, like specifically gone out of their way to make sure that their investors and their shareholders have no energy exposure whatsoever. Like they're they've got they blatantly tried harder over the years to make sure that their investors have no energy. Why, yeah. why do you think that is? You know, I don't know if it's I don't want to say it's political. I, I don't know. But I mean, we, you know, we know some of the narratives in recent years is is is, uh, you know, hindering and, and, you know, the even the banking side of, of the energy space. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's extremely interesting. But you know what? With that comes opportunity. And that's the way I've been looking at it is I mean, tremendous opportunity. We run our, our portfolios on the well side in 2020, 2022. We're nearly 20 percent energy right now. We're hanging around between 10 and 12 percent energy. But I mean, I think there's been tremendous opportunity, you know, because of that trade. And because as somebody, you know, who was trying to outperform a benchmark, you know, how are you going to outperform your benchmark? Look, look for the weakness in these other indices. And I think that's a weakness of theirs. Yeah. Um, so you think it's a political thing, really, that, they, that they've gone out of their way to make sure their investors have no exposure at all to energy? I mean, I, I mean, we, we do know, I mean, the ESG movement and I mean, the, the powers to be, you know, we're we're really pushing it. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not getting political here, but saying, you know what, sometimes things are political and you don't realize it. Do you think that crude oil at 200 is off the table or you think that's a possibility? Heck, I mean, I, I remember was it 2008 when crude oil yes. ran up to 150. I was I was uh, a young buck, new commodity broker. You know, I was 24 years old. I I witnessed people opening opening commodity accounts because this was this was when a lot of trading was still going through the floor. I was upstairs as a broker, and people were just opening accounts. If you didn't open like three to five accounts that day, I mean, you were doing something wrong. Everybody wanted exposure to crude oil. I think to say that can't go to 200. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that. I would look at the sentiment around where we are. Like that's where we like, looking at gold right now. I don't. I think gold still has upside. I think especially if silver gets about thirty bucks, twenty eight hundred dollars should be hit for gold. But and I think they're start. You'll start to see more public around it. I mean, look at the mining stocks. They're still so underperforming. So I look at the sentiment around around crude oil. If we get above that above the Russian invasion of Ukraine high one twenties. And uh, you know, see where we are there, and see you know, see what type of sentiments around it, and what type of positionings around it. I mean, there, it may be very. You say, hey, two hundred to the cards here because it's, this is an unloved rally at that point. So I think I have to see how it sets up. But 
you know, I wouldn't say it's off the table. You know, you, you mentioned the 2008 spike in crude oil up to 150. The S&P 500 energy index, so these are the stocks, these are the energy stocks in the S&P 500, are still below those highs or at those highs for all intents and purposes. That was over 15 years ago, right? You still not, not you're still refiners. relatively young buck, but not that young. Yeah, not the refiners though. Those refiners are, are, are just looking and doing amazing things. That was it. It's been right. It's been just the refiners. Yeah. Like when you right when when you look at yeah. the energy sector index, we're still at the same levels that they were 15 years ago. That's yeah. a big base. Well, and, and that's it is. That's a huge base. I mean, you sound you sound pretty bullish on it. I I think that's that's. I mean, there's opportunity kind of you know breeding from that. I think that's definitely something. Um, I mean, you know, we've seen every sector make highs, and and to some point too. That's why it is a smaller percentage of of the S and P 500. And you know, we look at the S and S and P 500, and you know, it's it's the 500 greatest companies in the world, basically. And the and the good ones, the better ones, keep becoming worth more, and the ones that are are performing, they become worth less or get kicked out. So I think that's that's to you know, going back to your question before with with why are they unloved and from the index standpoint, that's that is one reason because you look at it at, as a, as a whole as an asset class. You know, you've seen every really uh, many other asset classes make new highs and continue to make new highs from from those from 20 years ago and 15 years ago and, and energy hasn't but I, th I think again with that it, it brings opportunity i'd like to i'd like to believe that that you're going to start to see you know more tailwinds within that space and, and i i think too that you go to some of the banks and, and analysts like a morning star um i remember going to a, a morning star conference the summer of i think 2021 it was and and their you know crude oil was was well above 70. this is prior to the, the russia war um you know there's they're marking energy names to 50 and 60 dollar crude oil i mean maybe they're marking them to something in the 60s now i i mean i bet many banks aren't so imagine the longer you see some of these names you know stay at these levels but while crude oil holds above 80 or if crude oil goes above 90 i mean there's just that just creates you know from a balance sheet standpoint of, of where they're extrapolating these numbers more cash flow and um, i think a huge tailwind for prices in the future if you're a futures trader um, you know, are you looking at the CL or are you looking at like uh, heating oil or gasoline? Where do you think the biggest opportunity is? Well, I the one thing that I've been you know, I'm going to talk to the CME today. I, I want them to, to launch micro gasoline and micro heating oil contracts. That's one thing they haven't done. And guess what? The open interest in, in gasoline and heating oil is, is pretty is pretty tough. And those are really big contracts. So they're hard. Hold on. To Hold on. I, I, is that really I, why you're? Why you have a meeting at the CME today to tell them to open up these contracts? Well, I would. I bring it up every time I see them. I bring it up every time I see them. I'm. I'm going to. Shoot That's a not why he's going. And have and have a coffee. Have a coffee with some of them. But uh, I mean, overall, I, I bring up every time. Every time I see it. I mean, look at look at copper. You have micro copper is I think one of the best launches. Copper options for many many years. And what once the floor dissolved had no interest at all. You're now seeing copper options with, with really good bid asks, even platinum and palladium have decent tradable open interest and in options right now. Gasoline and heating oil, no bids, no asks. You can't, you can't, no offers. You can't do anything in it. So it's, they're really large contracts. And, and like I said, I, I never like to put my back against the wall. I've traded gasoline probably two times over the last you know 24 months. Very, very kind of, you know, way I'm looking at it, strong, strong, uh, you know, feeling on how things were going to play out. But because of that, I'm you know, you know more active in crude oil. And it, it's a shame that you don't at least have the the volume and the options. But if they did a micro contracts, I, I think it I think it'd wake up the interest and, and, and be a whole different game. So yeah, we're yeah, we're following crude oil more and, and very much more active in, in that. And especially from a brokerage standpoint, our, our clients we put our research every day, give out levels in crude oil and um, and we we do videos talking about crude oil. We're we're rarely pushing the gasoline narrative, but you know, we'll do something on gasoline just just to kind of set up, okay, maybe, maybe you know, the way to play things or way to look at the broader theme that's taking place right now, because gasoline does look pretty good here right now. If you get if, if one goes, probably the other ones are going to go too, right? Yeah, yeah. Like for for typical investors, for normal investors who might not be, you know, digging into some of these futures and they want energy exposure, it's probably going to move together, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Bill. Uh, let Great. us know if, uh, if you know if if we get these micro uh, natty gas or your or heating oil contracts, please. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Should be fun. Bill Baruch, yeah. Blue, Line, Blue Line Futures. Always a pleasure to talk to you, man. Thanks a lot. We'll be Thanks in Chicago in, uh, in September. So oh, we're yeah. Going to Cubs right. game. You're coming with us. Let's link up for sure. I'm in. All right. All right. Nice. See you, Bill.
I, I, he's like one of the most polished guys that I, that I, that I know. He's, he's like a, he's, and he can talk about anything. He's great. Dude, these Chicago guys, man. You know, yeah. I'm into it. I'm totally yeah. into it. I freaking love Chicago, man. I was in Chicago. When the hell was I in Chicago? I think it was like October, right? When was I in Chicago? Something like that. I don't know. Oh, I, I, I have a wedding in Chicago next, this fall, next fall. So that's a long time from now. So. I can love Chicago. It's so clean, you know, yeah. right? Because it burned uh, down. So they, I mean, they made they made a lot of mistakes like New York City. And then when they rebuilt it, they were like, oh, yeah, the, the way we did it the first time, that was dumb, <laughs> right? That's what happened. New York didn't yeah. burn down. So that's why New York, all the garbage is still out in front, you know? Well, yeah. And and in the summer, it can be a little smelly, but that's that's the way it goes. Eh, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it gives a character, you know? Yeah, sure. It gives New York character. All right. 927 uh news flow very light today couple couple private equity things some takeovers i don't know if you guys saw about the uh the tesla robo taxi uh what happened? Gonna be, tell me there's gonna be a there's gonna be a tesla robo taxi what does that mean i don't know they're having someone veiling uh elon announced it like over the weekend or on friday i think it was on friday actually right um they're they're, they're doing an event um get the exact date now not that it matters but if you're wondering what the hell got into tesla at the close on friday that's that's what got into tesla at the close so got it interesting um yeah i don't know it's it's pretty it's pretty quiet i mean the, the miners are all over my my filters here all all the, all the bitcoin miners what as as morning movers yeah as movers today it's all crypto i mean four percent on bitcoin will do that yeah yep. i mean they're not really moving that much to be honest i mean riots up less than four percent mara's up five percent you think it'd be more right micro strategies up more than that micro strategies up 11. Yeah, not not a bitcoin minor, minor, minor spencer yeah okay fine not a minor but you know what i mean no no, no i'm just breaking balls so why don't we read some of these jamie diamond comments because this is always fun <laughs> oh i thought we were going to talk about the meme coins we do that enough. all right uh so mostly positive apparently he's an ai expert too not just a banker so u.s economy is still resilient consumers still spending uh inflation may be stickier rates higher than expected ai could augment virtually every job wow thanks huge fiscal spending trillions needed each year for the green economy that's always in there jamie diamond says rates could spike to eight percent ai is akin to the printing press so what like what does this mean he's been saying that uh, though. hold on uh warns on inflation political polarization wars creating risks not seen <laughs> since world war II. then he questioned the soft landing said he's, he's pretty much not on board with the soft landing says the market's pricing in like 70 to 80 percent chance of a soft landing he thinks it's much lower but back to ai what what does that mean it's like the printing press are you asking is, is that rhetorical right. or are you asking so there's a productivity dynamic, right? That should really, really boost economic growth. So, so AI will we'll find out when it really happens, but typically you would assume higher growth, higher incomes, higher real or higher real interest rates and actually lower inflation, right? Just like any sort of technology, technological revolution drives down prices, creates lower inflation. So maybe we enter a world with higher interest rates, however, lower inflation, no i just nobody ever wants to talk we don't to know about this stuff. we don't know if no one knows who cares also like how do we know Hardly when it's cares. here this is this, this is what this is what was bugging me but everyone keeps saying oh when when ai like gets here how do we know when is it here now how do we know it's been here for a long time yeah it's here no but when it like permeates but but like what's they, what's they, the they threshold changed the, they changed the name to machine learning yeah, that's right. I, I remember that. I remember I remember the machine learning thing. That was a that was a big yeah. big thing a few years back. So tell me, Straza, tell me tell me why tell me why I, I, I wanna be I wanna be thinking about this and wasting brain energy. Tell me. AI is a huge theme. I don't need to tell okay, you. This but, is like, uh, okay, so great. AI is a huge theme. So now today is Monday, April the eighth. How is it gonna affect my day, my week, my month, my quarter, my year? How do you think I should think about it? You shouldn't. You see, it's not for you. How, how's your uh, your your AI? Oh, you didn't it didn't come yet, right? That the the thing you bought. 
I'm in the second batch. All right, my bad. Second batch. First okay. shipment went out on Easter. It should come sometime this month, and uh, I'll be in the second batch. All right. I paid extra to get in the second batch. I also have some coming in the fourth or fifth batch, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, look, on the topic of, of AI, I mean, obviously it's going to, it's going to, um, you know, provide this underneath demand for, for chips and U.S. government is, you know, spending a lot of money to. And you don't, and you don't think the market has priced in some of that? Right well, now? I mean, there's, you I mean, word's it, gotten out. Every time there's a headline, right? There's a headline this morning for Taiwan Semi, right? Taiwan. Um, yeah, but it's, it, it, wait, there's, it's a, there's, a, huge, there's it's a huge, there's a huge group yeah. of people whose occupation it is to make headlines, to make people think that it's important. It's literally their job. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, the dot-com bubble, JC, how long was the melt-up? When did it really begin? Was it the mid-90s? 95 was, so 95 was a hell of a, a hell of a year. Hell of a year. Right. Irrational, so irrational like exuberance was 97, right? 98, 97, I think. Something like that. Yep. And then you had the, uh, then you had the 98 correction, long-term capital management, Asian crisis, and then it ripped. But then, but the, the, the Dow transports peaked in 99, industrials peaked in 99, Q's kept going. These broad, when you get a broad secular productivity improvement, right, that affects the whole globe. These bull market periods and the melt up phase of them leading into the bubble can last a lot longer than people think, right? This isn't just the back half of 2020 into early 2021 where we melt up for a couple of months. If a lot of, yeah. if what a lot of people are saying is true, this could be a several years thing. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's in context. There's actual, there's real numbers, right? Real fundamental improvement behind the scenes driving these stock price gains. That's important. Maybe to you. Should be it is to you. definitely not. I couldn't care see, less. Yoso thinks we're, see, Yoso thinks we're in 1995. This is the thing a lot of people Great. are saying. Great. Let's see it. Listen, it's I'm all true. for AI. I'm That's all important. I'm all for increased productivity, but I don't have to like pretend to know anything about that stuff and like let that impact my decision making in a portfolio. Now all of a sudden I'm an AI expert. I don't know fucking nothing about AI. No one's calling you an AI, an AI expert. Don't worry. <laughs> Whatever the opposite of AI expert is, that's me, right? But that's me for a lot of things, for the record. I'm, I, you know, now that I'm getting into T-ball, now I'm kind of the man because I actually know a lot of things about, you know, baseball. Like, if there's anything I know about, it's baseball. <laughs> JC is going to be just thriving in his element. Yeah. Uh, it's about baseball. time. Baseball is one of those skills I have that never comes in handy, ever. <laughs> Ever like no like never ever 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 comes in handy. Until now, I've been waiting twenty years for this. More probably. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about this copper chart Please. I marked up for you? All right, toss it up there. I think this is a pretty good one. So, the monthly MACD crossover. <clears throat> this is a very very long term momentum reading. Typically, what you want to see is the moving average line pop above the signal line that's in black there and i've marked up the chart for all the crosses it's bearish crosses in red the bullish crosses in green this is not a perfect signal at all it looks pretty good on this one that's why i picked copper doesn't look this good on all the charts uh it could be fraught with false signals maybe not so much for this one because it's such a long-term chart it's it's more likely to be operate on a huge lag and sometimes you do see that where the signal comes either way too early or way too late but for the most part it does a great job of helping you spot turning points in the long-term trend. We're getting one right now. It's also more powerful when it stays above the zero line. It just speaks to the strength of the longer term trend there. So we're crossing over above the zero line. This looks really promising. Another thing I would point out marked with the red arrows here on the left-hand side of the screen, when it tries to cross and fail, or if it were to do that uh, to the upside too, that seems to be a nice signal and a, and a place to enter trades as well. So right now, more and more MACD crosses. Silver's got the same thing going on. A lot of these futures contracts are just now completing a monthly MACD cross. This would speak to the beginning of a new leg up for these. Why don't we do a? Um, why don't we do? Why don't we broaden out this monthly MACD cross and create like kind of like an alert system? You know, like this mm -hmm. week's like this week's monthly MACD crosses, like just on a weekly mm -hmm. basis, just run it. What crossed yeah. over? On, on the upside and the downside for the record. 
And we could open it yeah, up like to that. everything. Like open it up to any stock, any commodity, any forex market, right? You like that? Yeah, we'll run it on like our broad asset class, industry group, sector universe, international universe. Um, we're putting a, we're putting a little table together now. Like a super like a like super it. duper universe. We're working so on like something. at the end of the week, we'll be like, okay, you know, and then maybe make the mar what's the market cap minimum? A billion? That won't be a problem. We're not. I'm not going to do it on individual. Oh, stocks. I kind of wanted to do it on individual stocks. No. No, my computer is it too much? too much. All right. We're building something cool. I mean, we could do it. Eh, it's it's noisy. So sec it, what, I, what sectors I want, and industry groups is probably enough. It's broader than we. All right. Do. Yeah. All right. Keep it broad. I don't love it. I don't love it. I still kind of like the individual stock idea, but all right. That's enough for now. Well, let's start here. Yeah, that's right. We can start now. And then we're going to like it so much that we're going to expand it to add the uh, individual stocks. We can do that. All right. Um, and like, you know, I'll, I'll reiterate again, you know, go back and zoom out on a chart of copper overlay gold. They don't, they don't like to move in opposite directions for very long, very often, you know? I don't think it's just a, a, a copper thing. I don't think it's just a gold thing. I think it's a metals thing. Fonz, do you have your copper gold overlay chart? Throw that up so everybody Throw can it see up. it. Throw it up. While he gets it, he, he might need a second. But just look how clean this is. Like, ignore the indicator in the lower pane. Just look at the price chart, right? So the first one on the left probably came a little bit early. I don't know. Back to copper. Back to the copper chart. Talking about. One second. Yeah. yeah. So the first one, the first bearish cross might have come a little bit early, right? But for the most part, look at how well this has caught the big legs up and down. No? Yeah. I mean, these are very long-term trend following systems, like very long-term. You get very few signals. Um, and when you do get the signals, they matter. Makes sense. Yeah. The, you're, you're catching the meat of these trends. You're not going to be there for the very first innings or the very last innings. Well, in this case, uh, be there for, that's, that's in, in this case, you might. I mean, it kind of just started. Typically, you would get in a little bit yeah. late. And that's okay. That's me. I'm that guy. I have no problem paying more. I prefer it. I'm choosing to. I'm going out of my way to choose to pay more. I like flying first class, baby. You know? I get to skip the line, right? I get to sit up front, mm -hmm. get a cocktail if I want, you know? Mm -hmm. sometimes i get food we get we got tommy lackey in the house saying he's feeling a lot of john murphy in here this morning a lot of well you know i'm a murphy disciple right anybody here from john murphy lately he's been mia dude can we get john murphy on the show spencer uh i can try <laughs> i remember one time this is a true story uh tommy this is a true story. This was years ago, and I was with an assistant of mine, and we went to, uh, I think it was a CMT conference, and I think John Murphy was like a keynote or something, and he was like late or whatever, and he goes on, and he says that, you know, he goes on and gives his presentation, and my assistant at the time was like, wow, you weren't kidding. She's like, you could have given that presentation. Like, that sounds like you, and I'm like, I sound like him, right, you know, <laughs> but she made a, she made the point, like, you could have done that for him. Like all the things that he was spewing are things that she was used to me saying every single day. Like just to show you just how much of a John Murphy disciple I am. Proud of it. You know, some people are Weinstein disciples, like Brian Shannon, for example. Some people are William O'Neill disciples, right? And and that's all good. All those guys are fantastic, uh, you know, people to to learn from. Uh, I'm a Murphy disciple. It's just what it is. Tyler calls you John Murphy Jr. John Murphy Jr. You know. Not a bad junior to be. The Cuban, the Cuban John Murphy, right? They do, you know, with a name like Murphy, they do say that the Cubans are the Irish, the Irish of the Caribbean, right? We've we've had we've so, had this conversation before, I think. John Malloy told me that. John Malloy, which is a very Irish name, said that the Cubans are the Irish of the Caribbean. So, all right. I don't know. I, I to this day, I don't know what he meant by that. I took it as a compliment because I loved. I do love the Irish. <laughs> I freaking love Ireland. I, I I subscribe to the Gaelic Athletic Association for the for the annual hurling championships, you know? So, like, I'm in. So, I took it as a compliment. Throw up this copper overlay. <sighs> Look at oh, that. You don't, you don't like it? What's the matter? Spencer? Yeah, you don't I'm... like this, Spencer? Does this no, no. Amuse you? No, no, I like this. I like this. 
What do you think about that? They look the same. We can do this with a lot of uh, commodities charts, really. So if one base is going to go and it's gone, I think gold, we would call this a very decisive breakout at this point. Copper's probably coming. And like I said, copper's breaking out to not just new 52-week highs, highest level since like Q2 of 2022, well on its way. Well on its way. This is a little base on base in both of them. And copper's just finishing that second smaller base right now. Gold, gold, you know, these commodity super cycles, gold tends to get going first. That's no different. Do you think, you know, as somebody who likes to overthink things, Straza, yeah. do Man, you yeah. think that the gold breaking out to new all-time highs and what's happening in the uh, in, in the old uh, Bitcoin, you think it's just a coincidence that they're both doing this at the same time? Or you think that there might be something there with currencies all over the world losing their value? No, I don't think there's anything there. I, I think they're both risk assets. You think gold is a risk higher. asset? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. All right. Why? Do you think it's a safe haven? I don't think it's a safe haven. I wouldn't I wouldn't categorize it as a risk asset. Um, then what is it? You know, I hate to go back to my gold bug days, but I, I really do like thinking about gold as kind of like the base currency, kind of like, you know, you know, gold remains the same and everything else trades relative to it. You know, like gold that, is that like would gold is like the sun and all of the other asset classes around it trade relative to it. Are you sure you're not talking about the US dollar? <laughs> That's how how it literally works. Well, the US dollar is, is is one of those. Like the US dollar would be like Earth, right? And it revolves around the sun and the dollar spins around too, and the dollar's got its moon, you know? No, I I, I get it. We're doing the eclipse thing today. I get the theme, but not on purpose. Not done on purpose. True, just truly how I feel. Markets around the world, particularly the commodities markets, are not priced in gold. Many of them are priced in U.S. dollars. Well, right. We, so the dollar. So we is live in America. We can do anything we want. I like to price assets in gold, as you know, right? Could I always could have? Yeah, but no one's doing that. No one does that. Good. We do that as technicians. There's not like there's no market where things are priced in gold. First of all, they, in dollars. They, there is a market. It is a publicly traded market, and you could price it in anything you want. Markets. What doesn't trade? What doesn't trade is CPI. So pricing things and adjust for inflation by pricing the CPI to me is dumb. I think pricing things and other assets like gold, like crude oil, like the dollar and other foreign currencies. I think that does make sense. Yeah, nothing trades based on gold. Wait, nothing yeah. trades based on gold. Says who? Oh, Wavy's telling me gold is money. I've never been able to buy anything with it. Yeah, because you live in 2024. But your dollar just broke down relative to gold. The dollar is the last one holding up. Every other currency had already been losing its value relative to gold. Now the dollar is doing that. What's the obsession with 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 like the monetary debasement and like the dollar crumbling? It's not the US obsession. That's just what's happening. People just love this. Um, and it and you don't see it. You just see higher dollar, stronger dollar, resilient right, dollar. Stronger dollar. Oh, hold oh, on, excuse me. Stronger yeah. dollar relative to what? Every other currency? Right. So is yeah. it dollar and strength or do those other currencies suck more? What's the what's the difference? <laughs> Just a big difference. Okay, gold is not a part of the but, currency. Yes, it is. Of course it is. It's just not one of the currencies that they can make more of, you see. There's a finite amount. I like what I like what Mike's calling it. It's a yardstick. Fine. But whoever asked. The, the, the thing about gold being a risk asset isn't anything any any asset that's breaking out to new all-time highs couldn't that be called no, a I'll risk asset I'll retract, I'll retract that statement before that gold's not a risk asset I, you could argue that gold is a risk asset if people sure. are putting I'll, risk I'll, on I'll to one, catch new all-time highs is that not a risk asset? I don't know. just a thought I'm getting well, you're seeing the same thing in BTC, Dawson. And I'm with you on BTC as, as like a currency. It's just an irrelevant currency, you see, because Bitcoin just is not worth anything. So yeah. at least gold has 15 trillion of worth, almost 16 trillion of worth. Bitcoin's just not there yet. So it, it doesn't, it's not in that category yet. I'm with you, Dawson. I'm with you on the Bitcoin. It just doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Hey, should, we, should we get Ian Cully's thoughts on this? Please. All right, Ian, we're bringing you on.
Dude, I'm, Ian. I'm with you, JC. I'm with you. <laughs> I was just going to say that the, the, some of those shots of you in the uh, in the bumper with the fro, you look like a, like an 80s rapper or like a, like a sitcom star or something. I love it. There's a lot of hair in those shots. There's a lot of hair in those shots. I kind of miss it. Not going to lie. Um, all right. So Straz is like such a millennial. How old are you, Ian? Well, we're about the same age. I'm 43. Okay. We're, you and me, we're the old timers in here, right? Elders. Is, Elder is millennial. Is that why we agree on this? Because the kids just don't know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I pull up, you know, my, my Forex.com account and there's spot gold, spot silver right next to the euro, the pound. and all the other major global currencies. So, so that's, yeah, a default, I mean, that's a default setting or is that something you did? That's default. That's a default. It's so probably just a coincidence, right, Straza? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> How old are you, Straza? Are you like hardcore millennial? How old are you? 35. Pretty, pretty hardcore. What are you, seven years younger than me? I, I think that puts Steve right in the median of millennial. Is Median mm. millennial. What about you, mm. Spencer? Are you in the I, uh, lower? I'm a, I'm a younger millennial. You're a younger millennial. Yeah, I'm I'm towards I'm towards the bottom. Steve is Steve is middle. And do you think that what I'm saying is lunacy, or do you think there's something to it? As a younger millennial, which part? The part of gold being a currency, and Straz is talking about the dollar going up, but only relative to shittier currencies. Dollar's not going up relative to gold. It's actually breaking down. Yeah, no, I'm with Steve on this one. <laughs> so, Ian, it's it is a millennial thing, then. I think so. Because to me, this is just common sense, and for them, they think I'm crazy. Like, and and usually, like Straz and me, Spencer, like we're on the same page on like 99 percent of life, you know. So the fact that we're so dislocated in this particular subject is fascinating, right? Well, I think that it's, we it's, look at far more gold charts than, than Straza or Spencer. That's, for now, yeah, probably for now, you do. let's keep it. Let's make sure it's we're always gonna, that we're way. We're going to turn these young little bastards into gold bugs, Ian. You'll see. Hey, it's, it, I think price is going to do that, right? Doesn't have a price that has a way of of, of changing investors' minds. It does. Mind, right? it does. But looking at the gold chart for me is like staring at this fucking eclipse. <laughs> it burns me. It burns my eyes. It's just uh, it's it's like I'm getting stabbed in the eyeball. What are, what are we so missing, bad. Ian? You, you, you heard us talking about copper. The conversation with Bill was great. Um... You know, you heard us talking about a lot of different things. What what are we missing, you think? Um, you know, what really caught my attention in the past week are the 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 small mining stocks, <clears throat> those juniors. So GDXJ carving out a, a multi-year base here uh, on an absolute yeah. basis and relative to the big boys, GDX. Looks like copper. Yeah, yeah, it does. And what's what's interesting. Is just in the past week, week and a half, my, I've been getting emails and texts about these small junky mining stocks that are like barely a hundred million. So I think, oh, yeah. I think you know, with, with silver breaking out last week, and you know, the risk appetite starting to pick up, and, and money starting to flow in. The animal spirits have returned. I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Oh, well, you need that exactly. Exactly. So I'm what does that mean then? So then what's the playbook? Not just these $100 million uh, juniors, but silver, silver miners. What else? Like, where do you go out on the risk? As spectrum? far out as you can. Uh, oh. Yeah. So what is that? Where does that some, get you? Some scam in Vancouver that owns some <laughs> South African mines or claims to. Like, that's what I'm thought. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and, and Ian, you wouldn't throw the um, smaller precious metals into that basket. Like, you don't. Go out looking for beta and palladium or platinum. No, no, I'm looking at uh, gold and silver and, and those those mining stocks silver. in particular. Um, you know, I think you can just I think you look at GDXJ if you want to keep it simple. Um, yeah, SIL is another great play. SIL uh, and SILJ. Um, there's a number of gold. silver miners in today's deck in the gold rush, uh, and that's that's what's so, wild is I was putting together. Uh, the gold rush uh, deck this uh, this morning, and God, there's just so many good looking setups. Oh, so many good looking setups. So, a lot, lot of uh, triggered, and there's 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 quite a bit on, on the verge of breaking out. 
Can we can we talk about something uh, something really interesting that I personally find really interesting? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So there, there's this old mantra goes back a long time, you know, back to my before I was a gold bug. This has been going on for a while. Where the the price of a good suit, a bar of gold, and a cow are all roughly about the same price, right? And then you're looking at at a price of a cow. 2500 to three grand, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. Right? Uh, gold bar, right in there, right? Right right under 2500 So it's right kind of in line. Uh, good suit, a couple grand. I feel like the suit might be undervalued relative to gold and cows, right? Any, any thoughts on that? You think that's crazy or you think there's something there? Is that right now? Always. What do you mean? They always cost the that's same. That's like the that's like the saying. That's like the the mantra or whatever. That's like the rule of thumb. So those so suits and cows have not gotten more expensive for fifteen years. A good suit, a cow, and an ounce of gold. Sorry, stock market Mike is right. An ounce of gold, not a bar. Ounce, yeah. Sorry, how many ounces is a bar? I don't even know. Shows you how many bars of gold I own. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I don't know. I think good suits more expensive than. The uh, price of gold right now. 2500 bucks? That's about yeah. right. Yeah. I would say cheaper than that. I mean, what do you consider a good suit? It depends on where you get say, it. Weren't you just in Thailand buying like cheap ass suits? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they weren't cheap. That's interesting. I'd never they, heard that. They were cheap. You never heard that? A cow, no. a suit, and, uh, and, uh, and an ounce of gold? No. Oh. That is interesting. Yeah. The cow lines up. The suit, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to throw that out there. Just something I've been thinking about because these are the things I think about, you see. <laughs> you want to hit that bumper there, Spencer? Recess. I'm ready for recess. Let's do this. All right. Ready? And I'll let Straza have his moment. So I'm going to the Price is Right this weekend. Yeah. Dude, if I get yeah. called up, it's game over. What day? What day are you going? Uh, Saturday. Okay. You better get called up. Where is it? It's at it's at the New local York? uh local event center. Oh, uh, okay, really? okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Who does it? Who does the show now? It's Drew Carey, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's Drew Carey. Drew Carey, yeah. So I'm going to Price is Right. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Come on down, dude. If they call me. <laughs> Forget about it, man. You, oh, my are God. You, are you going to be ridiculous. dressed up? You have to be dressed up. Well, it's funny because I'm going with a few local buddies of mine, and they're like, do we need to have custom shirts to get called up because we started doing some research? Or yeah. they, they started doing some research, I should I should clarify. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you imagine? That would be epic, dude. I, for the record, I don't know the prices of anything, so I'm probably going <laughs> to <suck. laughs> But hilarious. that in and of itself will be funny. <laughs> There'll be like a carton of eggs. JC will be like, I've never been to Target. <laughs> I hope I never go to Target. Do they sell eggs at Target? Yeah. Yes. That's my point. You don't, oh, know. I don't know. I know. I'm not good. <laughs> Hopefully they call my wife. She'll probably be better at this than me. Wait, anyway, wait, what's that quote? What what's on? the quote from um, Arrested Development, right? It's a, it's a banana. How much could it cost? $10? Right? <laughs> that's JC. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Straza. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else like to go? I, I, I just want to say I, I watched ev every second of the Iowa South Carolina game yesterday, and it was it lived up to the billing. It was a tremendous, tremendous game. Um, and so yeah, that's my basketball take for the weekend. It was awesome. Is this women's basketball? Awesome, still? awesome. Women's basketball. Uh, it's over now, that? JC. It's over. It's over. I'm just not one of these people who how have to pretend to care. I really don't give a shit at all. Good, fine. It was really exciting watching. It was tremendous. It was people. tremendously good exciting. Friday night too. Good. Oh man, Saturday. Okay, was good too. Hold on, Friday night, Spencer. What's uh, what about that late game whistle? That was interesting. I th hmm? I, th at, I at first at first I thought it was the wrong call. Then I saw some replays and I thought that's probably the right call. I saw the replay. Of course, it was the right call. It. Dude, on the last play of the game, like the last five seconds of yeah. the game. They were going to shoot a game-winning shot. They called a moving yeah. pick. Set up proper that. screen. Dude, and that's the thing. Watch NCAA March Madness. You get punched in the face going to the rim. They're not <laughs> calling anything. All of a sudden, they start calling everything on UConn. There might be a little conspiracy going on against UConn, too. 
look at uh, all these travel issues that UConn had, but the other three three teams didn't have. We have bunk beds in these hotel rooms. Uh, what's his name from NC State? has got a giant king size bed. I don't know what's going hey, on. Maybe you should blame your travel coordinator. I don't know. They had the same travel coordinator as the other three okay. teams, but for some reason it took us two days Look, to get there. And you need rest when you're changing time. Tonight, zones. Tonight's but game wanna... m- m- might be like the best college basketball game that I ever watched. I hope it is. Dude, it's not even going to be close. We match up way too well against them. I feel so bad for Purdue. I'm so glad we're playing them, though, because they have been the consensus second best team for the past two years now. So it really is the two best right. teams in college we'll basketball. We'll see. We'll see. I'm very excited for tonight. Very is anybody excited. gonna be drinking Boilermakers? <laughs> I don't know what that did is. Guys, did you guys realize that Bill Murray's son is the assistant coach? Yeah, Murray's at a lot yeah. of the games. Really? I, I did not know that. Yeah. He's yeah, he's a rock star. You don't know what a boilermaker is when you drop the shot of whiskey in the beer and you chug it? No. You never did that. You didn't have fun in college. They don't do that in Maryland. That's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we we were doing Jaeger we, pops. We, we would do other other forms of that. We didn't call it a boilermaker. We called it other stuff. It's a classic, What's classic the, uh, edge of fast car bomb? Uh, move right there. Yeah. yeah. Jaeger bomb, Irish car bomb, sake bomb. Yeah. But never on a boilermaker. I never. Anyway, whatever. You should have them tonight in celebration. I should. You guys want to hear about my um my adventure on a Friday with a you like a ripping meme stock? Yes. Um what'd you buy? What? What did you buy? No, this is this is the phone that the thing that I bought like two weeks ago. That 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 oh, DXYZ, okay. and I and I I've been keeping an eye, keeping an eye on it. And you know I don't do a lot of like this may surprise you. I don't do a ton of like short term tactical trading, right? So I look on Friday, and this thing went to like from forty to like seventy five bucks in like in minutes. And I was like, oh shit, I should probably sell this thing. But I'm not like set up to do like tactical things. So I. I, 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 it's on my phone. All right. First off, all right. It's first mistake. I'm on my phone and I, I, I'm on my computer and I'm like trying to figure out like, so I, I open up trading view and I get like the view app up. I'm trying to like be, be smart about it. It's, isn't it a closed yeah, what end is fund it, and you're Spencer? trying to, what is it? it? Yeah. Yeah. X, Y, Z. What is X, Y, Z. This is a closed end fund that invests in private companies. The largest holding is SpaceX. Oh. Okay. The VWAP doesn't make sense if it's a closed end what? fund. What? VWAP wouldn't make sense if it's a close. Okay, well, why? I'm just telling. I don't know why. I don't know why either. But I'm just telling you what I did. All right. So, so um, I but by, by the time I, I I get it up on my computer and I get the indicator up and I'm looking at it, uh, you know how there's like the upper band and the lower band. It it violated the upper band and I'm like, oh, I should probably sell right now. So I go to put my order in, and I put the order in, not, and nothing happens, and nothing happens. Yeah. And nothing. Ha- and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then I look at the chart. And the stock's not, and it's not moving. And I'm like, oh shit, is it halted? And it was. So I, I missed it by like maybe five seconds. And I, I got stuck on this halt, which is not, not a fun experience because you don't know where it's going to open. Um, Why was it open about five minutes later? Um, kept watching it. It fell through uh, the actual VWAP. I sold and I'm out now. Of course, now today it's at $76, but um, what are you going to do? So it was. Did it open a lot lower? Like how much lower did it open? After uh, the fall? Not that much. I ended up, I sold at like 51. Um, did you ever find out why it was? Halted? Yeah, volatility halt. Yeah. Jeez. And why is there so much volatility in this I, thing right I, now? I don't know. <laughs> this is why I bought it in the first what? place. It's, it's Mimi. It's SpaceX, man. So last week, Spencer comes on and tells SpaceX? us he's buying this. this he, this, last week, Spencer comes on. He tells us he's buying this crazy closed end fund. We do an interview the next day, and somebody's telling us about how bad closed end funds are. Were you listening? <laughs> Wasn't that yeah. ironic? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, look, uh, no, you know, Dawson. I, I knew where the, I knew where the sell button was, but again, I'm on my freaking phone. Okay, I, I, I'm not. This is not like a real account. This is my dumb account. I'm not like I'm hey. not positioned to d- be quick, right? <laughs> like so. Spencer made some money. It was yeah. a good trade. Hit the applause. Yeah, it was a good trade. It was a good trade. I'll blow it all in Atlantic City this weekend, but it was a good trade. So that was my adventure. That's what I got. All right. All right. I'll blow it all at the hard rock. Friday, I, got, right? I got, I'm doing legs. I got legs. I got legs in an hour. Ooh. Doing, doing legs today. And I got, I got T-ball practice tonight. So I'm going to be struggle. Struggle <laughs> city at T-ball practice after legs with Maggie. Uh, all right, it's Monday. We got the Flow Show, eleven thirty a.m. Eastern Time. Sean and Steve, right here on the channel. 
Thanks to our guest today, Bill Baruch. Um, check out all of our stuff. Links in the description. Hit the like button. Go make some money. And uh, see you guys around. Geo Bowden up 20% this morning. All right. Yeah. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it